Ah, Lewisburg, West Virginia. It's been voted the coolest small town in the United States. And for good reason. It possesses all the amenities of a thriving community with broad appeal to outside tourism. Take a walk down the street and you'll find several coffee shops and cafes, as well as a variety of restaurants to suit whatever your taste might be. You also find that boutique lodging is popular here. And you won't have to walk far to find a watering hole. Choose from tasting rooms to beer gardens to wet your whistle on a hot summer's day. Lewisburg is the county seat of Greenbrier County. Its proximity to the Greenbrier River and the ancient Allegheny Mountains, along with the high mountain valleys here, make it ideal for all sorts of outdoor recreation, from golf to underground cavern exploration. And at one point, a bunch of politicians liked the area so much, they hid their secret underground headquarters just a few miles from here. You know, the Greenbrier Resort, Heck, Lewisburg hosts the West Virginia State Fair each year for crying out loud. About a mile outside of town, it's a place people want to be. This, this is Lewisburg. But I want to show you some things here that you might otherwise miss or pass right by and not even know they were there. This is the county courthouse, but what I find fascinating is just down the hill behind it. The original spring that was established by Andrew Lewis when he was a young land surveyor in the 1750s. It's been known as the Lewis Spring ever since, but its memory's definitely fading. As I asked around trying to find it, even several locals couldn't tell me what it was or where to look. And here it is, still flowing nearly 300 years later. 20 or so years after the Lewis Spring was established, at this very spot, Fort Union was built. From here, Colonial Frontiersman Rendezvous had formed an army of over a thousand men under the command of the same Andrew Lewis, who had jumped rank to general. They would eventually march nearly 200 miles through untold wilderness to the mouth of the Kanawha River to meet the mighty Shawnee tribe in the Battle of Point Pleasant. That fateful bloody day ended with the Shawnee and their chief named Hokalesqua, or as the history books call him, Cornstalk, defeated. Chief Hokalesqua was later murdered while imprisoned. Face it, history has some pretty dark moments, and if you thought I was done telling my story about it, well, you'd be wrong. Even though Lewisburg would be formally established in 1782, and Native American rebellions, as they were called, and raids, were successfully put down, it wasn't long before we'd be fighting amongst ourselves. The building you just saw was once the Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals, and during the war between the states, it was turned into a makeshift hospital. I've read soldier graffiti can be seen on the walls inside, but unfortunately it was closed when I was there. I caught sight of another small stone marker that made mention of the John Wesley Methodist Church and how it had taken artillery fire, so I went to see for myself. Once I arrived, not only did I get to see the spot on the wall, but a very kind lady invited me inside the church to see the actual cannonball itself. My name is Wanda Coleman, and I'm a member here at John Wesley. I have been here all my life. <laughs> um, I'm just showing a little bit of the inside, and upstairs is uh, where the slaves sat, and whites sat at the bottom. And uh, we have the cannonball in our possession. And so we're on historical society. We love this church, <laughs> and everyone's welcome. 
After leaving the church, I continued to explore, following old signs and stone markers to my next stop. What I found was a mass grave, the final resting place of nearly a hundred dead. Men and boys who fought for the CSA, unclaimed after their deaths at the Battle of Lewisburg. Their bodies were exhumed from the Lewisburg Cemetery and moved to this mass common grave once no one claimed them. The mass grave is 80 feet in length and 40 feet in width and is in the shape of a cross. Even though the Union won the battle, Lewisburg was sympathetic to the South and would remain a Southern outpost for the rest of the war. I'm of the opinion the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. Instead of trying to destroy and erase our history, which is only a disservice to the living, I think we should try to learn from it. Instead of trying to reduce complex circumstances and contexts to single issue, thoughtless responses and sound bites, if we're honest and courageous enough to wrestle with all the complexities and not merely shout down or try to cancel people with different opinions than our own, perhaps, perhaps, as naive as it may sound, perhaps we could build a better future. And instead of assigning opinions, if we were to ask them, to be more kind and authentic in spirit like Wanda. If more of us were like that, the world could be a better place. Lewisburg is full of history, like the Greenbrier College for Women and one of only four remaining active Carnegie Halls in the world. There's definitely a vibe here. From the people to the eclectic assortment of shops and businesses. To the many galleries as well as theaters you'll find across town. Whatever you're into, you'll probably find it here. Or perhaps you'll find something new. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Lewisburg is pretty cool.